Yo, what's going on, Serpa Squad? Tanner here. I've been really busy with a lot of intensive projects lately, and I've just been going really hard, so I figured, you know what? I'm going to slow things back this week. I'll do a little update on some of the things that are going on here in the animal room, show you some things outside with the pond, and I got a lot of cool stuff to show you in this one. But before then, I got to go and run some errands, so let me do that real quick, and I'll meet you back here in just a moment. I'm really trying to be proactive on the pond this year. My wife and I actually started redoing the mulch the other day and that's a lot sooner than we did it last year, but I didn't have enough. So I had to pick up some more of that and then I also got an additional plant. You can never have too many, right? A quick look inside the pond. It's doing quite well other than being absolutely swamped with algae right now. It's not really too big of an issue and I'm actually getting something later on in the week to address that. Not sure if we'll have a chance to do it in this video or not. If not, we'll do it in a future upload, but that would be pretty cool. Address that real quick. And overall though, it's looking really nice. All the plants are starting to come back really strong. As you guys know, I use primarily perennials so that they come back year after year. I don't have to waste money and they look better each year that they come back. And uh, this is our little ecosystem, you know, it attracts all the birds, all the wildlife. We've got Wellington the frog who came back. I actually got a really funny video of him eating not too long ago. I'll put it up on screen. Hopefully you guys enjoy that. but. All of the plants, they're really coming back strong, which I love to see. It's almost May now, so that's really whenever it starts to get into peak season. Uh, June and July, that's really when it's looking its strongest, and even in August. But I got to get a few more plants in here. That one that I got today, it's a salvia. It's cool because it has some nice flowers on it. They stay fairly long and attract a lot of pollinators. And that's one of the things that I like to do here is get a lot of plants that attract pollinators since they're kind of on the decline worldwide. So try to help them out a little bit. I'm gonna dig up a hole here, put those catfish in there that passed away a couple months back, unfortunately. So we'll put them there and we'll put that plant over top of them as a little commemorative piece and also to serve a function. And I actually got to put more uh, more of that mulch. I was going to say moss, but more of that mulch back here. Just get a really nice look. And uh, yeah, so that's what's going on. I'm going to get to work. I've got an adequate hole dug here, and then I've got the fish. Definitely sad to have had them go that way, especially since I don't really know what happened. Uh, they were also quite large, and definitely my favorite fish in that pond, so definitely sad. But, you know, it's just part of the hobby. And uh, I always like to put plants over top of them. I think it's just a nice, a nice little sen sentiment, uh, nice way to commemorate them and show appreciation for the joy they bring us in our lives. Last year I used brown mulch, but I decided to go with black this year to get a little more contrast. A lot of the exterior on our house and different things around here are brown, so it kind of just meshed together. So using this, I feel like we could get a little bit more contrast with everything. And I like the look of it too. All right, so there it is, looking good. I got everything all mulched. And in fact, I might also go here and replace these rocks with mulch as well and just leave a little embankment over here. But that's what we got outside, let's head in. I picked up something else I think is pretty cool. A few prints of the kids. And that, my friends, is one more thing that I'm just slowly but surely doing to try to get this house looking like a home. Not gonna lie, it was... They're going at it. The toads. My neighbor's gotta hate me. <laughs> I've got an absolutely regal photo of Henry. What a handsome lad. We've got Napoleon. Do that like and subscribe thing. Firebelly toad. Had to get Wellington on there. He's definitely a favorite around these parts. We've got Dean, and last but not least, Pancake. And moving into the animal room, one of the first things I wanted to show you was the progress on the stream tank here. I'm actually super surprised with how quickly it's grown in. I knew that it would do well, I just didn't expect it to happen this quickly. I think it's only been set up for about two months, and it's, I mean, it's looking really strong. Look at all those ferns, the moss, all the functionality of the setup works really well too. And unfortunately, I still don't have it stocked. I imagine salamanders to be in here, to be honest. Unfortunately though, I can't seem to find any captive bred specimens. So I might end up just putting millipedes or something of that nature in here. 
not entirely sure you guys could definitely let me know but all in all i'm really liking the progress of it now something else over here that's unfortunate but expected is that we lost leaf the ghost praying mantis we had him for about four months or so or may maybe it's closer to five but it was a pretty decent run the males unfortunately don't live quite as long as the females so uh, i think by the point that we got him he had already lived about half of his life and then we had him for the remainder as you can see he went through all of the cycles he's got his wings and it was just a really cool and fun pet to have my wife actually took to him surprisingly well at first she was not really about them but it turns out that she likes praying mantises so we're definitely gonna have to get another one here shortly not the same kind but as you can see i preserved them and i attached them onto this stick with a little bit of super glue and i suppose that as i get more i could attach them onto this stick to make kind of like a little diorama type of piece could be pretty neat but i got to get a container to actually put over top of this so that way it's sealed up a little bit better than just being out to the elements but I think it was a really cool thing to have. If you got a little bit of extra space and want a cool oddity pet to have around, I would definitely recommend a praying mantis. Easy to care for, a lot of fun. Enough of the sad content though, let's look at the animals. Now, as far as Pancake and Flapjack are concerned, the Suriname toads here, they're doing very well. Their tank overall is doing quite well too. There's a little bit of molding on the driftwood, but I've been doing more frequent water changes to get that addressed. The toads themselves, they're spending quite a lot of time together, which is pretty cool. And the male's actually been doing a clicking sound, so I haven't seen Amplexus or anything like that. I'm not sure if they're trying to breed, but I don't know if we can even have a successful breeding operation in here. Based on the research that I've gathered, at least, there needs to be a lot more height to this tank, so upwards of three to four feet, if I understand correctly. And that might be something that we'll have to address long term is to get them in a setup that's taller than this just to sort of replicate that sort of thing because I definitely would like to breed them. I think that's a pretty cool feature of them, but also just for sustainability within the hobby and stuff like that. I guess we'll see what happens. And moving on over to Houdini's new vivarium. I'm really pleased with how it's turned out. In theory, everything should have turned out fine, but you never know really what is gonna happen until you get things moving and you actually do it. But as you can see, all of the plants have established quite well. This pothos has really taken root and I can't wait till it just overgrows a lot of this setup. All of the snake plants and everything else, they're doing really well. And he actually digs through the setup quite frequently. And something that's cool with that is, as I said in the setup video, the way that I did the substrate is it actually will retain his burrows. And so when I lift up the water bowl, for example, underneath there you can see all of his burrows and the ways that he digs. So my guess is that when he goes underground, he's actually using the same tunnels all the time. Because like when he's under there, you can't see him moving underneath of there, which is pretty cool. So I love to see that. He uses every inch of the space. He goes over in here. He's typically digging over in here. He basks up there, goes up here, explores all of the background, goes under the leaf litter. And I realized that he's just kind of chilling out right now, but I pretty much just turned on the lights for him. So he's not really in peak mode yet. It's usually after the lights have been on for a couple of hours. That's when he's really sort of exploring his lair. It's cool to see. And a great example that you can keep snakes in a beautiful setup. I think it's beautiful at least. I realize that it's not everybody's cup of tea, but he likes it and I like it as well. So that's all that matters. And moving up, we of course have the geckos. We've got Delilah back under this fern. Just hanging out, looking nice. We've got Cynthia. Oh, she's back here. I didn't realize that her tail was kind of poking up there, but you could see her hand right there she's doing her thing and then of course we got my man henry just hanging out looking regal he's actually typically not out during the day none of them are actually but i just turned the lights on they weren't on the regular cycle usually though he'll be right back in there so i'd imagine that here shortly he's gonna go hide away back there until the lights shut off for the night overall the tanks are doing quite well most of the plants have established nicely and are starting to fill in the space of course you have a little bit of die off that's to be expected. 
I'm really pleased with these new setups. It's cool to have all of the geckos together. And actually, I love having the geckos and the snake in a single cohesive unit. It's like a little reptile rack. I love how it looks. And it's cool to finally have all four of these animals in their forever homes. So I know that I have said that before, but I really have no intentions on moving them again. I think this is a really nice long-term solution. But one of the other things I wanted to talk about while we're over here is the puffer fish tank. At first glance, you might be thinking to yourself, wow, that looks like it's doing quite well. I suppose for now that could be the case, but things could change. Here, if we take a closer look, you'll see that everything is just covered with algae. There's a little bit of cyanobacteria, and overall, I'm just having a real challenge getting this tank dialed in. Now, there are a couple of factors at play here. First and foremost is probably what and how the puffer fish eat. They're primarily eating live and frozen foods such as bloodworms, brine shrimp, that sort of thing. They're picky eaters, so they'll pretty much only eat a select few things. And it just so happens that the way that they eat, which is quite messy, leaves behind some debris. And if I'm not in there constantly doing water changes, then it tends to create an imbalance in the tank. If the tank is filled with enough vegetation that's established, that really shouldn't be an issue at all. But with this tank, when I set it up, there was a little bit of acclimation die off with the plants, that sort of thing. It's to be expected. In my case, the vegetation really wasn't established. And as it was doing that, it was melting back and creating more waste. So it just really couldn't close in the gap. And I was doing frequent water changes, of course, but probably not enough to really offset that sort of thing that was going on. And in addition to that, I was having issues with the timer on the light to where the light was staying on much longer than it really needed to be, upwards of 18 hours a day, which is three times what I normally do, even on my established tanks. So it was just creating a whole mess of things, and even now I'm still trying to get it dialed in. Here, this is what it looked like a couple weeks back. It's completely terrible, easily my worst aquarium ever, and so I had to clean all that out, replant it, do that kind of thing. And with all of that said, I'm really in a predicament. I'm not sure if I want to keep trying to dial in this tank and get it to a point to where it is established and well balanced for these fish, or if I want to start up a completely new tank. In some ways, I think it would be easier if I set up another tank, let it season on its own before putting in the fish, then move them to it, and then, you know, just do something else with this tank completely. But I'm not sure if I want to do that. I would love to use this scape, the one that I have set up now, because it's already all there and it would make things easier, but I'm not opposed to starting over again either. It's up in there. I really don't know what I'm going to do. Let, let me know what you would do if you were in my shoes. Would you try to get this thing balanced in, or would you just start over again from scratch? I'm curious to know. And that's going to do it for this one, Surface Squad, because I got to get back to work. Let me know what you thought about the video down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Take care, and peace.